Hi and welcome back. In this video, we are going to do the walkthrough of the ordinary level titration question from 2017. It was question two. So if you have your exam papers, please find that now. Grab yourselves a periodic table. You'll find one at the back of your book or in your log tables and a calculator and then a, a piece of paper to write on. Okay, so we are going to power on. And again, reminder that this can be for ordinary level students to help them practice. Uh, their exam questions, or it can be for higher level students who I recommend start with the ordinary level questions and work your way up, build your confidence and your skills. Okay, so let's jump into the question. I'm going to ask you to pause the video now, and I'm going to ask you to read this piece of text. Okay, and we're going to jump into the question. So this is part A. A part one, it says name a piece of equipment A. So A equals, let's pause the video and write that down. And then I want you to talk about how was that piece of equipment rinsed before each titration. Pause the video and write your answer now, please. Okay, so a reminder, you should only be playing. If you've written the answer, you have to have a go at these. You need to lose me as your crutch. You can't be waiting for me to give you the answers. You have to be actively trying to do these. Okay, I'm here to talk you through where you might go wrong and to discuss the different possible answers that you're allowed to have here. Right, the first name of this, uh, the first thing is the name, it's called a conical flask. I would expect most people to know that and get five marks pretty easy. The next thing is how we wash it, okay? We wash it with a deionized water only. So deionized water, distilled water or pure water are getting you the marks, but we don't mention washing it with, uh, with the substance it's gonna contain, not for a conical flask. The reason for that is a conical flask what we do is we add a very specific volume, 25 centimeters cubed. We add 25 centimeters cubed, and if we had previously washed it with the solution it was gonna contain, there'd probably be some drops of that solution on the side, which would then drip down and make this more than 25 centimeters cubed. So this would not be accurate anymore. So that's why we don't wanna wash it with the solution it's gonna contain, we just wanna wash it with water, okay? We want an exact amount of moles in that flask, and if we have a few drops of it in there already, then we don't know exactly how many moles is in there. So only with water for a conical flask. Again, most of you, I hope, know that, uh, and you got the marks there for uh, eight marks. All right, let's move on. Name the piece of equipment B and explain what B is used for in this experiment. Okay, so here's B, okay, and you are going to uh, name it and then explain what it's used for. Okay, pause the video and do that now. All right, so hopefully most of us know that B is called a wash bottle. Okay, let's go over and check. Yeah, there it is. There's the wash bottle. And that was getting you six marks for naming that. Really nice, really, really nice. Uh, and again, you higher level students are probably getting frustrated here seeing how easy you can get marks on the ordinary level questions. But look, that's the difference between the standards. Okay. And then uh, explain what it's used for. Okay, so you, you can say it's for used for rinsing the conical flask. Uh, at the start, okay, so you, when you're giving it a quick rinse with deionized water, but again, most of you know then that during the titration, we also stop after every maybe 10 centimeters cubed to wash down the walls with the, of the conical flask during the titration. So either of those answers is okay. You can talk about how you wash the conical flask at the start or how you pause to rinse, uh, how you pause to rinse down the flask during the titration. So either of those is getting you the three marks. Uh, if not, if you didn't get these right, maybe make a note of it, guys, because these it, these are the mistakes then that we need to not make again. So don't just, uh, if you get it wrong, don't just mark an X and move on. And make a note of them. Okay, so let's look now. Name a suitable indicator and what, oh, it just says name. Name a suitable indicator. It's not asking for a color change. That's very, in, that's very interesting and different from normal. So name a suitable indicator. Here is the, uh, here is the, um, the reaction. So what indicator would we use for that? And then why is it advisable to place apparatus A on a white tile during the titrations? So a, a reminder again, that apparatus A is this conical flask. So why would we place this on a white tile underneath uh, during the titration? All right, so let's do that. That's C part one and C part two. Name the indicator and explain why we put the conical flask on a white tile. Pause the video and write those down now. All right, so going over and checking our market scheme, what should we have? Well, look, you can have any any indicator you want, really, but the two main ones we use for acid-based titrations are methyl orange and phenol phthalate. Both of those will work in this titration uh, because it's strong acid, strong base. So six marks going for naming either of those, methyl orange or phenol phthalate. Six marks is crazy for that. 
without giving a color change. But look, that's why uh, that's why it's ordinary level. Okay, let's see then. Why do we use a white tile? We use a white tile to help us see the end point or to see the end point more clearly or it makes the color change more clear. Okay, three marks going for that. Uh, it gives us a white background so we can easily see when we have changed from yellow to red. If you're against a dark background, sometimes that color change isn't just as easy to see. Again, I'd imagine most of us are picking up those marks pretty easily. All right, let's go on to uh, part D. So D part one, what is the advantage of carrying out one rough titration? Why would we do this? What's the positives here? Pause the video and write an explanation. Why do we carry out a rough titration? All right, let's see what they were looking for here. What does a good, good answer look like? Well, it helps you to find the correct point more accurately in the next ones. It gives you an idea where the end point is. So again, uh, let's break down what they have here. It helps. I don't think you need to have the word helps. You could say it makes it makes it easier to find the end point or know where the end point's going to be. Okay, that's where I, what I think. I think most people would write it makes it easier to know when when to stop or know when the end point is. That would get you the marks here as well. No problem. But yeah, helps you to find the end point more accurately at the end in the in the following more accurate titrations. All right. D, uh, is there a part two? Uh, okay, there is a part two here, but there's a piece of text before. So pause the video and read this piece of text carefully. And now it says, what is the average volume of hydrochloric acid that should be used in the calculations? So which ones are the accurate titrations and can you get the average of them? Pause the video now and find the average of the accurate titrations. Okay, so I am looking at these. We have 19.9 centimeters cubed was the rough titration. So we're going to count, we definitely don't want to use that one. And then here are two accurates, 19.6 and 19.5. So you have to now find the average of those. So if you hadn't spotted those two, they're the ones you want to use. You want to get the average. So pause the video now and get the average again. Okay, the answer that you should have got here was 19.55, 19.55 cm cubed. Well done if you got that right. If you're not sure how to do this, you add the two of them together, 19.6 plus 19.5, and divide by two because there's two readings to get an average, and you'll get this answer. All right, moving on, E. All right, now E is almost the same as some of the higher level calculations, actually. Um, so let's have a look at it here. It gives us the equation. It says the concentration of hydrochloric acid, so hydrochloric acid, is 0 0.1 molar. That's the difference here. Look how obvious they make it, what the concentration is. Concentration, hydrochloric acid, 0 0.1 molar. It's very clear. In a higher level question, it's never that clear. It's always more hidden in amongst the lower text. And it says, calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution. Okay, calculate the concentration of the sodium hydroxide solution, first of all, in moles per liter. So up to here, this is the standard way we always do. But there is this bit at the end, part two, says then find it in grams per liter. I don't think this is that challenging for, uh, definitely not for a higher level student. So I'm going to say at this stage, you guys should be able to pause the video and work your way through that calculation there now. Pause the video and try work your way through. Okay, a reminder, we're doing part one. And the first thing we're going to do is write down the reactants here. Okay, so we have HCl plus NaOH. Now, you could write out the rest of the balanced equation if you liked, NaCl plus H2O, but they're really irrelevant. We're interested in HCl and NaOH, okay? So like that and like that, like that and like that. I always ask my students to put these arrows and write down the concentration and the volume used per titration for each of these. At this point, I'm going to say, if you've already done all of this calculation to find the moles per liter, I'm just going to tell you what your answer should be so you'll know if you were right and you can skip over this a little bit. The correct answer here for molarity of the HCl is 0. Point, okay, so you should have 0. 0.0782. Okay, and that's molar HCl. And there is a range here. It's 0. 0.078 to 0. 0.08. So anywhere in there, you uh, so 0. 0.078 to 0 0.8 molar. Anywhere in there, you're going to be, they're giving you the marks. All right, so if you got that well done, you can skip on. And if you didn't get that, then you uh, you can follow along here, okay? So writing down the volume and the molarity for each of these. Well, first of all, we know the molarity of the hydrochloric acid solution. It told us here that it was 0 0.1 molar, 0 0.1 M. 
Now, how much did we use uh, of HCL? Well, that was this guy up here. This was the average titration value, as you can see, of the HCL. Uh, and it's 19.55 centimeters cubed. But I always tell you to deal in liters. So convert this to liters to put on this arrow here. If you didn't do that, you made a mistake. Let's go back and fix that now. Okay, so only liters here, 0 0.01955 liters. Okay, what about the sodium hydroxide? Sodium hydroxide is uh, obviously uh, the, what we're trying to find then. It says calculate the concentration. So we're not going to know the molarity. And uh, we should know the volume though. It would have told us further up here. So pause the video and work back to find the volume used. Okay, so hopefully you can see that it was 25 centimeters cubed portions of sodium hydroxide in each titration. Okay, that's in the conical, it's always 25. In liters, that's 0 0.025 liters. All right, pause the video and plan out your calculation here. What are we doing? What are we going from? What are we going to? All right, so planning this out, we're starting with, uh, we're starting with the molar or moles per liter of HCl. And we're finding out how many moles we use per titration, moles of HCl. Okay, because we didn't use a full liter. We use a lot less than that. So how many moles do we use per titration? From then, how many moles of NaOH did this react with? And then from that, what was the molarity of this solution, moles per liter of NaOH? All right. Uh, and there's another bit of help to get you started. Work your way through this now. Pause the video and do the calculation, please. You have to try and do this. Take away my crutch. Don't just watch me and copy. All right, so beginning here, moles per liter of HCl. We know it's 0 0.1 moles of HCl in every one liter. We didn't use one liter, so we want to find out how many moles we did use. We're going to cancel the liters. Well, how many liters did we use times by was this amount here? 0 0.01955 liters was what we used per titration. So I'm going to cancel out liters. And that leaves me with moles of HCl, which is what I wanted here, look, moles of HCl. So do that on your calculator now. You're going to get 0 0.1 times by 0 0.01955 equals 1.955 by 10 to the minus 3. So 1.955 times 10 to the minus 3 moles of HCl. All right, so that has got us to moles of HCl. We want, now want to find out how many moles of NaOH that reactor with. So I'm going to rewrite it out on the next line, 1.955 times 10 to the minus 3, and that's moles of HCl. And I want to convert to moles of NaOH. So I want moles of HCl to cancel, which means in my conversion factor here, I'm going to put moles of HCl on the bottom and moles then of NaOH on the top. From my reaction, I can see that this is a one-to-one -one reaction. So for every one mole of HCl, there's one mole of NaOH, which just means it's the same number. You can put it in your calculator if you like, but it's just going to give you the same number of uh, moles of NaOH. Mole, and this is NaOH now because the HCl, as we I forgot to do here, is cancelled out with that one. Okay. All right, so now we've got the moles of NaOH. We're up as far as here. We now want to go and find the moles per liter of NaOH. So, of course, this was the amount of moles we used per titration, but this wasn't for one liter. This was per or over how many liters of NaOH? Well, this was per 0 0.025. 0 0.025. So put that over 0 0.025, and that gives me 0 0.025. 0 0.0782 molar NaOH. And look what I said up here, 0 0.0782. And again, I know I'm right because I've got all my units in order. I've left myself here at the end with moles of NaOH per liter, which is exactly what I expected to have in my answer. All right. Let's go back here now, and it says then to find the grams per liter. Okay, so I've got to take this amount of moles per liter and convert to grams per liter. Okay. All right, so let's pause the video. Go ahead and do this now, please. All right, by the way, your answer here that you're looking for is somewhere in between 3.12 to 3.2 grams per liter. 
All right, that's the range. If you're in there, well done, you did it right. If not, then you can watch along and try and uh, try and pause as soon as you can and take over. Okay, so we're just writing out what we know, what we got up here. Okay, 0 0.0782 moles per liter. 0 0.0782 moles of NaOH per liter. And we want our answer. So I'm leaving a space here because I need to convert. We are want our answer in grams of NaOH per liter. Now notice that we've already got liters here and we have got liters here. So that's good. But what we've got here is we've got moles. And we don't want moles in our answer. We want grams. So we need moles to cancel. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to set up a conversion that puts moles of NaOH on the bottom so that they cancel. Now, please pause the video and take over and finish this off. I don't want to just be doing it for you. Okay, so obviously that means I need grams of NaOH on the top, like that. Okay, and the relationship between grams and moles for NaOH, how would I do this? Well, for every one mole, there is the molar mass in grams in one mole. So NaOH, when you add up those, you've got 23 is the mass of sodium, 16 is the mass of the oxygen, and H is the mass, one is the mass of the hydrogen. Add those all up, you should get 40. So if you didn't have this number, then you're going to get the wrong answer. Uh, and that's an easy thing to fix. Because it just means you added up, the you, added, you calculated the molar mass wrong. Okay, so when we do this then, 0.782 times 40. The answer I'm getting is 3.128. 3.128 grams of NaOH per liter. And that falls in here nicely. Uh, and that is the correct answer. So well done, guys. That is uh, that is the full calculation on the ordinary level question from 2017. I'm hoping that you guys are finding these. You're starting to get confident with them. You're starting to find them easy. And we're, we're moving through them nice and quickly now. Uh, and we're getting to the stage where maybe we're ready to jump to a higher level question. But we're going to keep powering through these ordinary level questions until they're so second nature for us. And that should make the higher level ones easier. I'll see you in the next video.